Hello guys, welcome back again to my YouTube channel. I'm Chrissy by name. If you're first time coming across my video, thank you so much for stopping by. Please do not forget to subscribe. For my non subscribers, thank you so much for always watching my videos. Please subscribe to this channel so you get notified whenever I upload new videos. So guys, today's video I'll be sharing with you guys on how to make this beautiful three piece we are seeing right here. So the brown legs, I already have the tutorial on my channel. I will going to leave the link in the box of the video. So go ahead and check on how I made my brown legs. So I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make this kimono and palazzo paint so if you're interested to know how I made this, please keep on watching and let's get into today's video. So guys, to make this kimono and paint, you need at least 4 yards of fabric depending on your size. You guys, so I went ahead to cut out 2 yards for each of the 2 pieces. That is 2 yards for the kimono and 2 yards for the paint. So the first thing I'm going to cut out now is the kimono and you can see that um, it's folded by 4. Remember I said it's 2 yards, this is 2 yards and it's folded by 4, so if you want it to be more bigger, you get, you just go ahead and make use of 3 yards, if you want the kimono to be more bigger, you go ahead and make use of 2.5 or 3 yards, depending on how free you want it to be. So now the first thing I will go ahead and do is to place my tape at the shoulder line, I'm going to take the length of this kimono which is 50 inches, then I add an extra 1 inch for the same allowance which is going to give me 51 inch you get this fabric is vintage and is 60 by length just that the client are making this for one her own length to be 50 so you can you know decide um to make yours to fall very well anyhow you choose to do yours it's totally fine you can use the whole 60 by length you get so let me not explain too much what i'm doing here is that i mark three inches for the neck wideness and i also came down by the same three inches you get so right now i'm going to connect it to give me my round neckline you get for this kimono so i'll just go ahead and you know cut it out just like this so the wideness i have from that neckline from this end here to this end here is 16 inches you get so you can make yours when you when you make use of you know more than two yards of fabric or three yards and from that place to this other point, you're going to have something like, uh, like I said, 22 inches or more you get. So from this line here, you can see where I placed my tape. I came down by 9.5 inches um, because the amp hole is going to be free. It's not going to be tight. Do you get? So here, I divided the person and um, both circumference by form, adding extra 5 inches. Then I curved my the armhole. You can see I curved the armhole. But I noticed that um the curve I gave there was small, so I said to you know come in a little bit, just like this. You can see what I have here. So I'll just go ahead and do it, cut it off after I was done. Do you understand? So this is what it looks like. So I'll just go. I'll just come here and you know slash this place into two, just like this. Can you see? And after I was done doing this, I'll just go ahead and slash this other side. You can see what I'm doing here. After slashing, I'll trim off any excess remaining like this part here. I'll just go ahead and trim it off just like you see me doing. And I'll continue with my slashing. Do you understand? After slashing here, what I'll do, now remember that I already cut out the neckline. I cut out the neckline for the both on um, front and the back. Now I'm done. What I'll do is to remove one of the pieces. You get so I will just remove the one that is going to be for the back, the one I will use for the back. I will just remove it, then refold this other piece. I'll just refold it very well, make sure it's on fold and on equal length. Everything will be very equal. Place it, place it like this. Then I'll just go ahead and cut out the neckline for the front because this is not the neckline for the front. You get just for a guide. Do you get you can see what I have here. So to get the neckline for the front, just look at what I'm going to do now. Here I'm going to, you know, from this starting point, from that shoulder there, I'll just place my tape and from there I'll take it up to this. Just look at what I'm doing. Go ahead and place your tape. You're going to take it up to um up from there and just um connect it just like this, then use one end to you know draw a straight line to the hem. Do you get? Just go ahead and just do it like this. You can see what I have here. I don't know which other way to explain this. Just can look at what I'm doing so well, you understand. You get so from the beginning of the neckline for the front only, 
I just used the three inches I cut out for the neck wideness. I used it to you know make a straight line. Then reaching to the to the maybe I can say like the bust, the under bust point. I went ahead to you know use one inch to you know drew a straight line to down. That is what I did here. I hope you understand. If you don't understand what I'm saying, you will understand what I'm doing at in this video. You get so right here. You can see what I have. I've gone ahead to cut out the front. And this is how it's going to look like just like this you get so after I was done doing this the next thing I'll just um, go ahead and do right now is to cut out the paint you get so for the paint this is the other two yards and I cut out like one yard of it so I'm going to cut out the front now I placed my tape to get the length I'm working with length 40 so you can see that i've gone ahead to you know mark two inches at the hem i'm marking two inch this for the folding allowance do you get for the folding allowance at the hem i went ahead to make a straight line then i came up here just look at what i'm doing now i'm going to mark the hip line so this is not a normal hip line that we normally use for our skates. Just divide your hip by four. Whatever you have, mark it here. Just like this. Then this is what I have. I marked 11.5. Then I came down here by two inches. This one here is for the crotch. Do you get? So go ahead and make yours like this. Then connect it just like this. After you are done doing this, what you are going to get now is the nail. You understand? So I mark the nail. Then I'll use my ruler to connect it. Just like this. After connecting, you will see what I have. Connect it like so. Make sure it's straight. Do you get? Then the next thing I'll just go ahead and do right now is on the waistline. Mark one inches. From the center that is the folded part mark one inches like this then after that place your tape divide your waist circumference by four also mark it then add one inch for your sewing allowance you get then after that on this hip line you are going to go ahead and divide your hip circumference by four just look at what I'm doing Divide your hip circumference by four, just like this. Then after that, you're not adding any stitching allowance at the hip. Just connect it from the waistline, connect it to meet your hip. Then on the cross line, going to divide your crotch. That is the tie. I divided the tie by two. What I have there is 15 inches. That is on fold. When you open, it's going to give you 30. That is the hip circumference, sorry. The tie circumference is 30, so I divided it by 2 and I marked it. I got 15 inches, then I have to connect it to get my my flap, do you get, to get the flap for this point. You get, so this is a palazzo point trouser and it's very free. What I did here is that I connected it using the 15 inches. I also marked 15 inches on the knee length and I connected it. So I am going to go ahead and repeat the same thing. Use 15 inches to make a straight line to get to the hemline. Just like this. It's a palazzo point. The person said she wants hers very free. Then I said to use the 15 inches. But at some point, I noticed that um, the 15 inches might be too free. It might be big. So I said, okay, that I'm going to reduce it so just look at how i'm going to reduce it how i reduced it is that i placed my tape like this and i was you know guessing on on the wideness that is going to be normal for the person so i got like 13 inches you can see i marked 13 inches i just um, take it up to from there then continue marking the 13 inches take it up from there then continue marking it I'll use 13 inches to connect it to the flap area that is the the crotch line you can see what I have here so after I was done this is what I have you can see that I've gone ahead to reduce it now it's perfect even me too I love how the thing came out after I was done sewing 
so from this waistline here i'm going to connect it the one inch i came out from i'm going to just connect it to the hip line now if you have been following my videos on how to make trousers you will notice that i use sometimes i use different pattern you get i don't have one particular pattern of cotton trouser because um i wanted to you know show you guys um the difference as in you can possibly use this pattern to cut out your trouser or you can possibly use another pattern or another method to cut out your trouser so if you watch my last tutorial on how to make um pints you can see that you will just notice that um this is not how i cut out um the other pattern do you get just and um, go through my my videos especially the recent ones on how to make pints you will notice what i'm saying do you get so after i was done cutting you can see what i have right now i placed another fabric on food now i want to go ahead and cut out the back do you get you can see so at this point i noticed that when i was drafting this i i forgot to you know remove the waistband you can see that from this waistline i have um 11 points um five inches so what i'm going to do now to remove this band is to simply leave my tape at the waistline then i'll just subtract two inches from it just like this then go ahead and do yours like this if you forgot to yours do you get this is how you to you know do it if you forgot it do you get so after removing two inches for the band i went ahead to you know cut it off just like you see me doing so after i was done cutting i placed my tape again removing the two inches for the band you can see that i have exactly what i supposed to have do you get now i'll mark two inches like this you get you know um back trousers and the fronts are not um the same the back is always bigger than the front so at this upper part here for the back i came up by two inches extra then at the side here that is on the crotch line i came down i came down by you know two inches so on this uh, crotch line that is this tie this place i'm placing my tape you can see what i have here i just um extended the lines for the crotch then i marked three inches you can see so from there i'll just go ahead and connect it just look at one i hope you understand what i'm saying guys i'm sorry if i'm too speed if i'm explaining so much it's just for you guys to understand it very well that's why i'm explaining it very deep like this so just go ahead and connect it just like this you can see what i have here so at the upper part is two inches at the side here is two inches as well and on the crotch line here exactly here is three inches you can see it for yourself so at this side here, this place that I'm placing my tape, I marked 1.5. So I'll just continue using with this um, 1.5. Continue using this 1.5. I'm going to connect it just like this. You can see what I have here. So this side here is 1.5. The upper part at the back is just 2 inches. After I was done, you can see what I have here. Can you see? So I'll just go ahead and cut it off. After cutting, the next thing I'll do is to place my ruler like this. Then I'll give it a slant. You can see how I place my ruler. Go ahead and place yours like this and give it a slant from the waistline. Just like this. You're going to give this slant only at the back. At the back pattern. That's the only place you're going to give a slant. You can see what I have here. So go ahead and also cut it off. After cutting, you cut this other side here. And also go ahead and slash the two sides just like this so guys after i was done cutting out the back pattern and the front i went ahead to find another piece of fabric by two just like this and i'm marking the waistband you can see what i have so i just marked four inches for the waistband because i noticed the fabric was stretching a little just a little bit then after cutting the first piece i went ahead to cut out the second piece so this for the 
back and the other one is for the front you get after doing this i'll go ahead and start the sewing so i'll start with the kimono first i'll just start with the sewing of the kimono do you get just um watch how i'm going to do this now for the kimono you are going to go ahead and open up your fabric both the front and the back go ahead and place the front on top of the back the right side facing each other just like you see me doing you can see what i'm doing here go ahead and place them the right side facing each other like this you get do the same thing for the other side make sure they are all equal place it like this then go ahead and join the shoulder with half of an inch just like this then do the same thing for the other side as well so guys you can see what i have here i went ahead to fold it you can see how it looks like so this is the other side you see so guys next thing i would now do is to go ahead and uh, you know take the length of this kimono from the hemline you are going to place your tape and take the length so we are going to use this length to cut out the long piece band because the the front is going to have band actually so this is the band what i have here is four inches wideness that is what i have here so when you fold it's going to give you two inches you get so this is a long piece band for the front so just um look let me not explain too much just look at how i'm going to do it you can see that i have a very long piece here you can see what i have here a very long piece so guys this is the remaining one that i'm going to cut out for the excess now we are going to open it i had a joining at the center of this um band so now i am going to you know fold the back neckline just the back neckline only go ahead and fold it then measure the the middle that is the center of the back neckline then go ahead and bring the band make sure you open your seam allowance go ahead and fold it up just like this now you are going to go ahead and join the band but just look at how i'm going to do it so it's either you take this to your iron table and iron half inches inside for the band only so it will be easier for you or you just do it like this then go ahead and join it like this then sew it all the way to the end so that is what i meant you can see how it looks like so you can't see any joining you can see that it's very neat the inside is very neat so you can't see any joining so go ahead and do yours like that and then from the neckline you can see the joining so this is it guys this is what yours should look like when you are done sewing do you get i hope you're understanding this now after doing that what next is to go ahead and fold this is the sleeve is cut together go ahead and fold the sleeve like this do you get so for the sleeve you're not going to open your shoulder line just leave it like that then go ahead and fold it then after folding you can see what i have i folded the sleeve then i went ahead to also join the side the both side using half inch so guys you can see what i have here so i went ahead to join the both side this is the front view and this is how it looks you can see that it's looking so beautiful so guys after i was done doing this you can see what i have here so this is the hem i also went ahead to see the hem as well so i did the center for the other for the both side now the next thing is to go ahead and keep it aside and i also ironed it out then go ahead and do the pint trouser so this is the pint i'll just continue from here now for the pint it's very simple it's not going to have pockets but you have elastic at the waistband you get at the back waistband so place your tape leaving the two inches just go ahead and place your tape at the front and mark eight inches now from this eight inches you are going to use half inch to sew the the flap so from this point you are going to start sewing from this point because the front is going to have zipper so when you finish sewing it will be open then for the back you are going to use half inches from that point to this other point so guys after i was done so you can see what i have here so this is the back you can see that i made it of my half inch and this is the front you can see where i have here i sewed it with half inch and i left space for the zipper do you get now this is what i have here for the front 
what I did next was to go ahead and iron the front band. You can see what I have here. So I use a um, light gum to iron the front band, only the front band, because the back band is going to have elastic, like I said earlier. Do you get it? So I just go ahead and cut out the excess that I have here. So go ahead and fold it by two. After folding, bring the front bind. Just go ahead and you know place it like this. Then hold it down with your pin. You're going to continue placing. Place it. Then when you reach to the end of the waist, you're going to go ahead and cut the remaining excess. You get so after cutting it off, you are going to sew this with a of an inch. So you can see the front. This is what you will have after sewing it, just like this. You get so for the back, it's going to have elastic. Just like I said earlier. So what I'll do now is that I'll just go ahead and pull the band into two like this. Then go ahead and place it. Then after placing it, I'll use half inches to seal this. Then open your seam allowance for the back. You can see. Then continue your placing. Continue your sewing as well. So this is the kind of band I am using. This one inch elastic band. Can see where I have here. So, guys, after I was done, you can see the back is not stretchy because I put elastic, I made it of elastic, that's why. Now, the essence of me putting the elastic at the band is to help hold the waistband for the back. Do you get what I'm saying? It helps hold your back waist. So, when you bend down, even when you bend down, the band is not pulling at the back. You can also see the front. This is what I have, and I also Fix my zipper already. This is invisible zip. I went ahead to fix it. So right now I'm going to place them the right side facing each other just like this. Then go ahead and you know join the both sides. Firstly, you are going to use one inches to seal this. Do you get so I used one inch to seal mine? Go ahead and continue sewing with your one inch, then do the same thing for the other side. So guys, you can see I've gone ahead to, you know, join it with one inch. I did the same thing for the other side as well, you can see. The next thing now that I'm going to go ahead and do is to place my tape. Just look at what I'm doing now. So the waist zip circumference is 34. That is, I should have 17, right? Divided by 2 is 17. So because it's stretchy, I just had, uh, I just have, I think I have about... 16 there so it's meaning just one inch right so because it's stretching when the person wears it is going to be okay you get it's not going to be too tight on the person's body so the next thing now to do is to go ahead and fold this hem using the two inches i marked for the folding allowance Do you get go ahead and sew it then after i was done sewing you can see what i have here now i want to go ahead and sew the crotch area you're going to place it into two like this just fold it by two place it like this then go ahead and use half inch to seal this you get just go ahead and use half inch and seal this now for the crotch you're going to make sure that the both crotch are very close to each other you can see i'm placing my go ahead and place it use your pin to hold it in place then you can now continue your sewing with the half of an inch I'm going to do the same thing for the other side as well. Do you get? So guys, after I was done sewing, you can see what I have here. So this is how it looks like. I'll also go ahead and iron it out, but that will be later. So guys, this is the both side. This is how it's looking. And this is the back side as well. You can see that even the crotch line is very relaxed. So it's not going to fold when the person wears it if you curve it in a right way, just like I did my no mistake, guys. Then you can see where I have here, guys. We also go ahead and put it on my manicure so you guys see how it looks like. So you can see guys, I already went ahead to iron it out and this is it on my manicure and as you can see that it's looking so beautiful. So you'll be wondering why I didn't make the bralettes. This is because I already had the bralette tutorial on my channel which I uploaded I think day before yesterday. 
so if you're interested to know how to make this bralette that made it the three piece just go ahead and watch my other tutorials on how to make bralettes or oh, i'm going to leave link in shop box for this bralette in this video do you get so guys this will be the end of our today's tutorial please if you love this video please subscribe so you get notifications whenever i upload new videos thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in my next one and bye